Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. In this video, I will go over how this awesome Euphoria poster was made. It was requested in the comments below and I wanted to come through for y'all. Unfortunately, once again, it stopped midway through me recording. And like I told you guys in the last video, I don't get a chance to see when it stopped recording because I'm just working the entire time. But I wanted to find a way to still give you all a nice and informative video. So what I've decided to do is go through, I re-recorded it again, um, but you know, it was already finished when I started a new recording and I just went through all the layers and I'm just gonna break down what each layer is, you know, well, some of them and show you what they do, the purpose and how I make it happen. Now, I've gotta be honest, I typically use the pen tool for precise cutouts, but I was being extremely lazy and used the select subject feature to let it go by much faster. And honestly, I was shocked because it grabbed what I wanted really well. And I feel like that's something you guys should check out. Um, the way to get there is by just clicking on the magic wand tool and just going up to select subject. I was honestly taken back by how precise it was. Good job, Adobe. So right here, I'm just grabbing all my subjects and moving them exactly to where I want them to be. Once I'm done with that, I'll catch you guys in the next part. So right here we have the layout and I wanna start with how I made the title. This is just a PNG image that I got from Google and I'm gonna show you guys how I manipulated it and made the title look exactly how I wanted it to look. You can see on the right side in the layers panel, how I'm making the layers visible and it shows the adjustment layers that were used. Here I've added two hue and saturation layers and clipped them, then used the masking for the top one to remove part of it and get it to make it look as if part of it is blue and part of it's pink. Once I'm done, I group the layers for two reasons. One being that it makes the workspace way more organized and trust and believe me, when you're working with over a hundred layers, making sure you remain organized is very crucial because things can get kind of messy when you're not paying attention. And two, it allows me to create a smart object after duplicating the group layer. Again, after duplicating the group layer. This is how we move into creating that glowing text. We take that smart layer and we're gonna duplicate it. Once we duplicate it, we're then gonna grab the top copy and go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Set it to around the 40 or 60 range and then click OK. Then we're gonna duplicate that layer and click the filter layer in the layer panel and set the blur to around 150. You can repeat this process again if you want. Then we're going to grab the smart object layer that we did not manipulate and we're gonna duplicate it. Once we duplicate it, we're gonna move that layer above all of the affected smart object layers. To add that bright neon look, we're gonna take that top smart object layer and add an adjustment layer. The adjustment layer we wanna add is the exposure. When we grab the exposure, we want to clip it to the smart object layer and then raise it. By raising it, it's gonna make it look like it's brighter and more white and really give it that neon look that just makes everything pop. Here, I'm just making the background layers visible. This was just me creating all kinds of different brush strokes. Nothing special at all. Just be creative and play with different things and you'll come up with something pretty nice. Now for the fireworks that are in the back, just repeat the same steps as the part for making the title glow that we discussed before to give the fireworks that same glow as well. And it'll come out looking really good. Hi 
Right here, I ended up adding some party hands for obvious reasons. Um, as you guys know, in Euphoria, there are a ton of parties. So I thought it would only be right to add some party hands and to, you know, really kind of give it a party feel and that high school, teenage party scene feel. And now for my favorite part, we're moving on to editing our subject. I started off with Fez, but I'm not gonna do any explaining on him. I'll explain the steps when I get to Rue, and mainly because she just has more steps since she's right in the middle, and since she's in the middle, the light is gonna be hitting her from both sides, so I kinda wanna explain the process in that. And now we're here and I'm going to explain how we attack this. And understand that all these steps apply to every subject. But for Rue, first we start off, like we do with every subject, we start off with adding a exposure layer. Now mind you, everything that is used for each subject is all found in the adjustments layer panel. So, and we clip each adjustment layer to the subject. So we start with the exposure layer and we turn it all the way down. Then we take our mask and we just line it up however we want. Um, we make sure those shadows look really good um, and make it look as realistic as possible. When using your mask, you wanna make sure that it's selected. And when your mask is white, that means everything is visible. Now, when you change it and make it black, that means you've hidden all the effects in your layer mask. But if you get a white brush and paint over the hidden parts of your layer mask, it starts to make it visible, almost like erasing the covering off of something. Now we're gonna add another exposure layer and this time we're gonna increase the exposure and we're gonna paint the areas that need to be highlighted as we did with the previous exposure layer. Once this is done, you can now move into adding the color from the lights. So what we do is we grab a hue and saturation adjustment layer and we set it to the color that best matches the light that's being projected onto our subject. And once this happens, we just basically do what we did again. We take the mask and we cover and paint whatever it is that we want to be seen or not. Now, since Rue has three different lights hitting her, we're gonna just add three hue and saturation adjustment layers and put them in the correct places where the light is hitting her. And that's what gives us that almost like three point lighting look. Once this is done, I typically, well, sometimes, it depends on what I'm going for. Sometimes I will add a brightness and contrast layer to my subject. And this typically happens when you have different images that are um, they just don't look all the way right and the same and playing with the brightness and contrast layer can sometimes make images that really don't belong feel like they belong, if you know what I mean. So I like to add that to top it off for my final piece of a subject before I move on to the next subject. Um, and as you can see, for all of the characters, 
I apply the same rules to all of them. Um, now I am gonna go to Maddie and explain what I did with her and how I added a solid color to give her that outline on her hair to make it again look a little more real. So with Maddie, it basically was the same steps as Rue since both of them are in the middle. But since Rue is covering her and is over, is on top of her basically and behind her, that top lighting is blocking Maddie. So the pink light, purple light, whatever you see um, that's hitting Rue is not going to be hitting Maddie. And you can see I did that with all of the characters that are underneath the top three. So with Maddie, same steps as Rue, just not the third light. Um, and I added that outline, a solid object to her hair because it really makes it pop and we can see like where her hair ends because at first it was just so dark and we weren't able to see it. And one last tip before I wrap it up, when you guys are painting, make sure you set your flow to a very low number. Um, this just allows you to really um, have full control over how much you want to be painted, honestly. Um, and you can really manipulate it a lot easier when the flow is set to a lower number. I typically keep mine around the nine to 20 range. And with the phones that I added at the end, to make it glow, just do the exact same thing that you did with the title and you'll get it to glow and make it look really nice. And there we have it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Um, since, you know, it's been acting up, the screen recording hasn't been doing what it's supposed to do. I really wanted to make sure I gave you guys an actual detailed video and explain kind of what it is I do and how I do it. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope it's informative. Remember to leave comments and let me know what you wanna see in the next videos and I'll make sure it happens for you. But other than that, thanks a lot. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Again, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, check out some of these. Also, don't forget to subscribe.